What's up, everybody? Welcome to the round 22 preview. Carlton, Port Adelaide. I'm filming this on Wednesday afternoon, and there's no real official time at the time of filming this as to when we're going to be playing. I'm thinking it's on Saturday. It could be Sunday. It doesn't really matter. Long story short, we've got the power this week. Uh, the rematch takes me back to when we played him at the MCG. That was on the that was on the 17th of April. I remember that. I remember going to the President's Club function that game. That was the day before my 30th birthday. I thought we'd get one in there and, and, and pinch a win at the MCG and, and maybe lose to Port in Adelaide. Um, but it wasn't to be. A very weird, bittersweet feeling this week. I, I, I really, I'm really interested to see how much energy we have left to give as supporters. Um, tough times, extension of lockdown here in Victoria, uh, just more compounding sadness, I think. Um, so obviously we, we hope that uh, the boys can put in a performance that you know distracts us or takes our mind off what is happening in our realities. And, and I've said this many times, that's a big burden for them to carry, but that's why the Carlton Football Club and that's why wearing the Guernsey is such an honour in my opinion because of um, what comes with it, because of the expectation and the responsibility to represent your people and your community that comes with it. Um, it's Murph's 300th game this week and um, I probably for the f one, there's certain things that happen that I've noticed in life, particularly at this age, I'm 30 now and, and when I heard Murph talk about him retiring and actually say the words, it was one of those moments where I realized, oh wow, I've actually lived through something, like I've lived through a generation of something and for me, I can remember every single Mark Murphy game that he's played. Maybe not on the spot, but if you remind me of what happened in certain games, I'll remember, I'll, I'll remember that game. Um, for a lot of kids, like I was 13 or 14 when he was drafted, and for a lot of kids at that age, you latch on to someone, I think, um, who really gets you excited about the club. And for me, that was Murph. He was the young, up-and-coming kid. He burst onto the scene. He had a little something about him, the decision-making, the speed, the tackling. He was willing to put him, put his, you know, seemingly small frame in the thick of it, and, and get hurt, and be brave, and and I just instantly fell in love. And he had that real class about him, and he, he would hit targets. Um, he was a beautiful kick going inside fifty, and um, you know he became a superstar of the competition, a genuine, genuine superstar of the competition. Twenty eleven was it was an amazing year, and and that's what he was for me, and, and he's been my favourite player ever since. Uh, I think him and Kuda are my two key pillars. Kuda was probably the one in my real formative years that I latched onto, and then Murph was, you know, when I was a teenager and, you know, getting real hype about games. It was always to watch Murphy and, you know, had his number on my back and and all that. So it's, um, you know, it's sad. It's it's exciting. Obviously, we're in, we enter a new era, and I think that the part that got me most emotional listening to his press conference was when he said, when he spoke about how, you know, I would have loved to have won a premiership, but I guess that's just not part of my story. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks because it was meant to be part of his story. Um, it was. He was meant to be part of the new era, the new hope out of the, the pagan era. And he was meant to hold up, hold up a premiership cup, you know, and, and I think it just reinforces what I believe in, in terms of life and, and everything. Like, don't take it for granted. Like, Kids of today, you're watching your favorite players. Yeah, we believe Walsh is going to be a great, a Brownlow medalist, two-time, three-time, four-time Brownlow medalist. Don't take it for granted. You never know when your favorite player has played his best season of his career. Like in 2011, I just thought, man, Murph's young. He's only five or six years into this game and he's like winning the AFL Coaches Association Award. Like he's going to get better and better. And the reality is he got injured. Badly, over and over again, he's had 19 or so surgeries. The body just doesn't <laughs> let you do certain things after, a, you know, two or three surgeries, let alone, you know, 10, 11, let alone, you know, 18, 19 surgeries. And and so I would say don't take it for granted with your favorite players. But also that just, it's a parallel to life. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So make the most of what you have now. Don't retire or in the case of life, don't end life wondering what could have been, you know, do what you want to do, chase your dreams, all of that. It, it sounds cliche. It is cliche because it's the winning formula. That's actually what it is. 
Um, so don't take anything for granted. That that was just something that was reinforced to me. And I know people have had strong opinions about whether or not he should be playing 300. I think that's just noise, to be honest. Um, I would I would ask those people and I would implore those people who sit on their high horse and say, no, he shouldn't play 300 to use that same energy that they put on into Mark Murphy playing 300 and use that same energy and bottle it up and put that same criticism onto the football club because the club failed, not Mark Murphy. He physically went out there on the field, copped the hits, all the injuries, went through the surgeries, the pre-seasons, uh, and did all of that. You know, it's, it's blame your football club. Don't use a scapegoat. That's weak. That's loser talk. And that's a harsh reality. So sorry to break it to you. Um, I'm a little mindful of this week because um, how disappointing last week was. Are they going to respond? Have they had the emotional lashing? Um, we know that when we jump off them, they surprise us. Um, this game means a lot. Obviously, it's a, you know, a club champion um, Murph's game. And I get flashbacks to the last game in 2020. It was no different to Simo's last game. And they came out like dog shit. They just did. They came out terribly. They didn't play with spirit. They got down by 40 early and they made a little bit of a push in the second half, but ultimately got, got beaten and... And uh, that was it. I get a little bit worried about that. I'm going to be emotional, I think, either way, just because it's like at the end of an era and I care. Um, if they lose badly, I'm going to be so just, just again, just flat, mortified, upset, depressed. Um, if they win, obviously, I'll be happy. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be asking, you know, where was this and, and all of that. But it, look, it's week to week. They're obviously a group that's not mature enough yet. They're inconsistent. This is just where we're at. Like it or not, this is where we're at. We are an inconsistent group. We haven't found our groove. There is turmoil going on. We don't know what's going on with the coach and the review and there's things going on that are a distraction. And uh, ultimately, we just haven't got the job done. But um, there are still two games left. And as I said, like if you're not playing for this year's premiership, then you're building habits for your next premiership. And I think Jacob Wiedering, who was on SCN this morning, said it brilliantly. He said he he didn't want to finish the season like he has in the past. Um, he didn't want to take anything for granted. He said in years gone past, he's just wanted to get through without being injured, whereas um, this year he doesn't want to do that. He said he, he, felt he, he felt it slip against North Melbourne. He doesn't want to do that again. And that's what I want to hear. I, I do not want any of them taking it for granted. I don't want them to come out like they've got the end of the season on their minds and not getting injured and, and all of that. You represent the club. You represent your people every time you take the field. It's important. Building, if it's really about winning and it's not about football being a job, then I think they will respond this week and and put in a, a performance that we can be proud of. Now, Port are good. Don't get me wrong. They're a good side. You know me. I love Port. Actually, I love Port Adelaide. Um, they're a good side, especially at home. Um, that's that's the hard part. But we'll see what happens in terms of who's going to come in or out. We got the whole injury report, no mention of Liam Jones, mention of Liam Jones the day after, and he's out for the season with with a knee complaint. So that's another one that's happened just for the for the history book, so we can tick that off. It looks like he's going to come out. looks like Harry will come out, and I dare say, well, McGovern and, and maybe Brody Kemp will debut. I think those are the two that come to mind right now. Murphy will probably start the game, and therefore the sub will be, I don't know, will it be like a Samo or... Lockie O'Brien, I don't know. I guess um, that's what I'm thinking, but I'll definitely put that out to you. What do you think about the changes? What would you do? And um, and we'll go from there. Also, leave me leave me a comment below about Murph and and you know your favorite moment about him. And um, obviously, the tributes will come. Thanks to Willem for for creating the one this week for Murph on the channel. Um, it's been very well received and. Yeah, end of an era. A little bit sad, a little bit emotional, but um, you know, the club will move on. We will move on, and, and hopefully, we can put someone else in that number three Guernsey who can who can do it. You know, the the, the respect it deserves because Murph's done that number three uh, a great service, I think. Anyway, so let me know what you think. Always excited to watch the boys play. You know that it's the Carlton Football Club, and we love it. A little bit of oomph taken out because there's nothing in terms of finals to aspire to, but um, there is there is pride to play for. So uh, let me know how you're thinking. Let me know how you're feeling, and we'll go from there. Go the Mighty Blues. Yeah.